Ostensibly, this started over a protest about the Hammonds. Hammonds were two guys, a father and son. One is, I think, 40s. The other one's in his early 70s. The Hammonds were charged and convicted in federal district uh, court several years ago of two counts of arson on federal land. Now, arson on federal land carries a five-year mandatory minimum. They were convicted in one incident of starting a fire to hide evidence of their illegal poaching. And they apparently enlisted one of their teenage relatives <laughs> to set the fire. In the other incident, the Hammond set a fire to apparently get rid of juniper and weeds. Juniper is problematic because it sucks um, water out of uh, the soil and weeds make it harder on their grazing for their animals. But the federal government had put out a notice, do not start any fires because we already have federal firefighters working on another fire and we didn't want new, fire fi new fires out there which could potentially endanger federal firefighters. Well, they did it anyways. And apparently uh, it spread onto federal land. Well, when this went to trial, Judge Michael Hogan, who was the federal district judge, apparently a bit of a patriot himself. And I use that in quotes. One of those patriots who believes that the Bureau of Land Management is a tyrannical body. Ruled that the mandatory minimum um, sentencing was unconstitutional as applied to these Hammonds and sentenced them to much shorter sentences. So the Hammonds get out of jail. Sometime after the Hammonds get out of jail on this uh, shortened sentence, the Ninth Circuit ruled that Judge Hogan erred and that the mandatory minimum is not unconstitutional as it was applied to these two arsonists and ordered Hogan, the initial judge, to resentence them to at least five years. So they were basically sent back to jail. And that's when these protests started. And the protests are fine. You want to protest, that's all well and good. You want to occupy a federal building? I got no problem with that either. I'm all in favor of occupying a federal building. But when you do it with guns, you are necessarily taking it over violently, necessarily. When you bring weapons of any sorts, I don't care if it's axes or knives or smoke bombs or whatnot, you are taking it over violently. And you are doing so, expressly in this case, to get the government to do something different politically. That is as far as I know, the FBI definition of terrorism. And apparently, the FBI is now uh, monitoring the situation. I don't think they should go in there and shoot these guys up. Because then, then you've got these uh, martyrs. Apparently, I don't know if these guys think they go to like some type of like heaven where there's like 72 virgins all with semi-automatic weapons and beer koozies and a new truck and a new truck two new trucks mate all right let's listen you know, to what happened is that at a certain point of like we could not sustain ourselves because of a critical lack of granola bars we will lay down our arms 
We have lost the battle, but the greater war endures. Well, just to give you a sense of who these people are, let's listen to a um, to one minute of a guy named John Ritzheimer. He released a 13-minute dispatch from the uh, Oregon siege. And let's just listen to uh, what he says it takes to do something like this before we listen to something else he put out just a month ago. I've gone out and met the people of Harney County. Been out here trying to win the hearts and minds while all these slander, nasty campaigns going on trying to say that we're out here harassing the citizens. We're following people, parking at their house. Does that even make sense? That I would come up here, I would miss Christmas with my family, miss weeks on end with the, uh, to be with them, to come up here just to harass people in Oregon? I, well, I'm up here trying to win the hearts and minds of these people. The success of us as a nation depends on us uniting as people. I do not want to drive you off. We need real men here. Men and women. Americans who have the intestinal fortitude to come here and take a stand and say enough is enough. Now, um, let's give them some... Uh some kudos for the uh, feminist perspective. Real men. Fake women are okay. According to <laughs> and, and just in case you're wondering um, what he means by Americans, let's hear John Reitzheimer, who gave up his Christmas with his family. Does that make any sense, according to him? As if the idea of occupying with weapons a wildlife reserve in Oregon makes any sense. Here he is, just at the end of November, right around Thanksgiving. I guess maybe he was taking time off from Thanksgiving, too, from his family. In this instance, it wasn't to stop the tyranny of the U.S. government. It was for something else. That's what I guess you call a constitutionalist. 